In this video, I'm going to cover how to use MySQL dump in order to back up a database and then also use MySQL to restore a database. So a lot of people know how to do this. This is kind of a basic thing in MySQL, but there's also kind of a lot of tricks to it as well. So hopefully you're going to pick up something new here if you already know it. So I'm first going to show you the databases I have in this test database. So I've just created some fake databases and each have some data. So we can see some database one, two, and three, and each have a few tables in them. So we can see some database one and show tables, and we just have one table. That one table has a few users in it with some terrible unhashed passwords. So there's three databases in here, and let's just see how to back them up. So the tool to use to back up databases in MySQL is MySQL dump. And what this does is create a file with text, and that text is basically the SQL commands needed to restore a database. So if we do MySQL dump, and we need to authenticate against it, exactly like the MySQL command, we can use this, and we can define some databases to export. So if I want to do some database one, I can output that to some database one.sql, or you know whatever I want this file name to be. So for instance, if I wanted to append a date here, I could actually add a date here through these little ticks here. So if I put date plus, and then I'll put a date format there, I'll actually get a date in the file name produced here. All right, and that was quick and easy. The database is small, and we can see some DB1. We have the year, the month, the date, and we have some time information here, hour and minute. If you're confused about what's happening here, it's just that putting these ticks here will run a command here and append the string to the file name there. So if I just run the exact same command here, I'll get a date in the same format. And I can do things like my string with date, add the tick marks, more text here. And I'm basically just concatenating a string together with the date here. So anyway, I've created a SQL file here and we can actually take a look at this since it's just plain text. And we can see what's happening here is that we have all the text needed to restore this database later. And it actually has some defaults that we should pay attention to. So for example, it will add and drop tables. So if we restore from this database dump file, this is actually gonna drop all my databases, recreate them, and then run any SQL to restore the data within it. So it'll lock the tables and then run any insert statements we have. Notice also here that it's inserting every single row existing in one SQL query. And the MySQL dump structure by default will attempt to do that. So if I had thousands of rows of data in here, it would still try to do that in as few queries as possible, which is quicker, but also means that MySQL needs to be able to accept all of that data in one query. So that's the most basic use of this. We can also do some other fun things. So for example, if I wanted to compress this file, I could actually pipe it gzip and from gzip redirect that output to the file and I'll just add the gz file extension here so we know it's been gzipped. And now we have a file that's gzipped. And if we output the files there we'll see that the gz format is actually smaller because it's compressed. And we can even do some other stuff there too. You don't need to do just gzip. We can do bz2 if we use the bzip command instead of gzip. This is actually bzip2. And you can experiment to see what makes smaller files. Here gzipping is actually more efficient. So we've seen using MySQL dump to export a database. We've seen appending a date to the file name. We've seen compressing that output to bzip or gzip. Let's see how to restore that. So in fact, I'm actually going to show you that it's restored. Let's edit this SQL file, and I'm actually going to make changes to the data here, which I don't suggest you do, but I'm going to do it just so we can see that I actually made a change. So rather than some password, let's do another password here. All right, so let's see. MySQL root p root use some db1. If I select star from users, we'll see that user fideliper has just some password one here. So let's restore from this file. I'm going to use the MySQL command. I'll put in my credentials. I want to affect some DB1. I'm going to redirect the output from some DB1 SQL file into the MySQL command, which is what this arrow is here doing here. All right. And then we'll be able to see that this restored from that database file. 
let's use some DB1, we'll select again, and we can see my another password here has been changed. So we know that I've actually successfully restored from that my SQL dump file. All right, so let's say you want to export all databases, and that's pretty easy. We can do all databases, so we don't have to define which databases we want exported. So we'll just do my SQL dump, add our credentials, do all databases, and actually, I can actually do the dash A, capital A flag also, but I'll spell out all databases, and I'll just do all db.sql. We're gonna export to that file. So let's check out all db.sql. Now we can see create database my sql well, this is actually doing every single database which is actually including the default my sql table now the default my sql table has things like users and privileges and all that kind of stuff so this is a full database backup it may not necessarily be what you want so i'm going to quit out of that and we basically see that we have all the databases now if we wanted to do multiple databases without doing everything, we can do the same command again, but we can do the dash database flag. So I want some db1, and I'll add database flag again, some db2, and I'll export that to some db's plural.sql. We'll see create database, some db1, and then here later we'll see some db2. So now we have an export for two databases in this one file. I typically will export one database per file, but of course this option is here if you want it. Now another neat thing that might be good for development is actually to dump your schema separately from your data. This might come in handy if you're trying to get other developers up to speed with your database during development. You can do just schema changes in one file and database data in other files, and this is kind of a helpful situation if you don't have a good migration strategy in your code base. So let's do, just pick a database here, I'm gonna do my SQL, U root, password of course, and I'm gonna say no data, so I want just the schema, and I'll export some DB3 in this case. So if we edit our newly created some DB3 file, we'll see that it has drop table, create table, but it doesn't add any data. Now the opposite of no data is no create info, which we can use, which will dump data, but no schema information. So I just overwrote the some db3 file, and we can see it lock tables and insert data, but it does not try to create or drop a table. The last thing I'll show you is how to do a new insert on every line of the SQL dump file. So what we're gonna add here is extended insert, I'm going to set that to false, all caps in this case. And I'll do that on some db1, which has a bunch of data in the users table. So now if we edit some db1, you can see it creates the table, and then every insert, every row, is actually inserted with a new insert query. And this is actually a lot slower when you have a lot of data, but this is nice for things like versioning my SQL dump files, where every new line will have a new insert, so you can see differences between my SQL files. Whereas the regular MySQL dump by default will have all three of these inserts in one SQL query, and technically on one line. That makes seeing version history, such as git history, with MySQL dump files difficult. Now this might also be needed if you're inserting things like blob files that are too large to do all in one insert. That might reach some memory limits that MySQL has. So having those inserts in separate lines might be useful for those situations as well. And that's it. Those are just some tricks you can do with MySQL dump. There's a lot more you can do, but these are the ones that I've used most commonly, so I wanted to share those with you.